The goal in a way is to support what data scientists call exploratory data analysis. So you as a data scientist want to analyze the data set that is to answer your questions using data visualizations and statistical methods. Of course, the eventual goal of your own project and data science in general is to build a machine learning model to make predictions of the future. For this, though, we need to have a basic understanding of statistics, and that's what this section, this video, is trying to provide. Here are the things that you should be looking at when you're analyzing data, when you're dealing with new data, when you're trying to understand data. The first and probably most important are the five number summaries. That is the mean, the median, the minimum, the maximum, and the two quartiles. Q1, Q3, the median being the Q2. Then it's also always important and useful to look at the histograms, to look at histogram graphs. We can make line charts of certain things to look at certain relationships. And you should also consider doing box and whisker plots to understand your data and to communicate your findings. Scatter plots can also be quite useful. And we're going to look at some of these things in this video. First, let's consider the five number summaries. The mean is what probably everybody knows here, the average, right? So that's the sum of the values divided by the count of non-missing observations. The median is a different measure of central tendency that's also quite important, and that's the number that's exactly in the middle of an ordered list of all numerical values. Sometimes the mean is more useful, sometimes the median is more useful. Often it's good to look at both of the things because the mean is very subject to outliers, whereas the median is not. It's also always important to look at what is the smallest possible value that we have in our data set. You should also look at what's the biggest value, and then the first quartile and the third quartile. I'm going to explain that in more detail in the next section. First, let's also consider the mode. The mode is different from the mean and median in that it is the most frequent value in the data set. That can also be quite interesting, and quite useful to look at that if you're analyzing data. So here are the quartiles. And again, it's a bit a similar idea than with the median, right? You take all the values, you order them, and then you make split points. You cut all the values in your distribution into equal sizes. The first quarter are the first 25%, the second quarter are the first 50%, that's the median, and the third quarter are the first 75%. The standard deviation. So that's a measure of dispersion. It's always in the same unit as the values. And usually you can remember that a high standard deviation indicates that the data points are spread over a wide range of values. Histograms are a graphical representation of the distribution of your data. Here, for instance, we have all those people who were on the Titanic as passengers. And we look at whether they survived or not, we color code this here in blue or red, and how old they were. And here you can see that we make these combinations of five years, right? So people from zero to five, from five to 10, from 10 to 15, and we see how many in that particular age group survived or not. And this allows us to see how the data is distributed. We see that many of the people on the Titanic were between 25 and 30. You can also, for instance, see that a lot of elderly people, those age 65 or older, did not survive the Titanic, whereas a lot of younger people, younger than 10, did in fact survive the Titanic disaster. So histograms are a nice way of visualizing the data, of getting a feeling of how the data is distribution, distributed, and to find certain patterns and to interpret the data. Very important tool. Box plots are another important tool of visualizing the quartiles. Here, 
you have different things that you indicate. You have all the important statistics except for the mean in one figure. And that's quite useful for the interpretation and especially the comparison of different things. You have the so-called whiskers. These are the small lines at the bottom and the top, and they indicate the minimum and the maximum value. Then you have the median, that's the line in the middle of the box, and the box itself indicates the first quartile and the third quartile. So everything in between is the so-called interquartile range, and that allows you to judge where 50% of your data points are. Right, so we remove the 25% and the, the first 25% and the last 25%. So we know that half the data has values between the first quartile and the third quartile. Scatter plots are another nice way of looking at a relationship between two variables. Here we, for instance, see the relationship between the weight of a person and the height of a person. We also have the biological sex indicated here. And what you can see is that there is a linear relation between the weight and the height of a person, but there is also some deviation, right? So you could imagine drawing a line here, and that would be the perfect correlation between line uh, to height and uh, weight. So this is a useful tool to see a relationship, to look for tendencies, and also to get an estimate of how much deviation there is across the uh, spectrum of the data points. Visualizations in general are quite a useful tool. Now going back to the Titanic data, here we have the people who survived and those who perished, and we have three different variables of interest. We have their biological sex, we have their age, and we have the class in which they traveled. And you can see that a lot of people in the crew and a lot of people in the third class did perish, whereas a lot of people or the majority of the people in first class did in fact survive. You can also see that women are much more likely to survive and men are more likely to perish in the disaster. So quite a useful way of making data accessible, of understanding data. We're going to be a bit more practical here following the tutorial that you can find on the top right. And for this, we're going to use another Python library called pandas that allows us to load the data. What you can see here is that the pandas, which we imported as pd, so we have the statement import pandas as pd, has a function called read underscore csv. A csv file is a comma separated file. And with the pandas library, we can load in that data. Here we take the file called train.csv and we assign it the name Titanic Train. So this is from a Kaggle competition of all the people on the Titanic. And what you see here is a description of the data that we just loaded. So we have different attributes um, that are in the data. One is the survival, whether somebody survived or not. And you can see it's either zero if they didn't survive or one if they survived. We also have the ticket class and we have first, second and third class indicated by the numbers one, two, three. We have their biological sex. We have the age in years. We have an attribute called SIPSP, which is the number of siblings or spouses that were also aboard the Titanic. We also have the P arch, which is the number of family members, both parents and children, that were on board of the Titanic. We have the ticket number. We have the price of the ticket. We have the cabin, uh, the, the cabin in which they stayed, as well as the port in which they entered the Titanic. C for Cherbourg, Q for Queenstown, and S for Southampton. So let's look at the data. Here are five different instances. And you can get them by taking the object titanic underscore train and calling the function head on that object. And you can see we have the passenger ID, we have whether they survived, what class they traveled, what their name was, their age, and how much they paid. And we're going to use this now to explore it a bit. 
But first, we're going to set the passenger ID that we have in the data um, as the index of the table, which allows us to index each of the passengers by their ID, makes it a bit easier. And the first step for these kind of things is to look at descriptive summaries, like the ones that I just introduced to you. So here we compute all the important five summaries that I told you for all of the attributes. So let's consider the third column called H. We see the count. We have 714 data points in which H was set. And we can see that the mean age of people on the Titanic was 29 years. We can see that the standard deviation was 14 years. The youngest person was 0 0.42 years, right? You can convert that to months, of course. The oldest person was 80 years. You see that the median strongly corresponds here to the mean, right? The me median age was 28. But you can also see that half the people on the Titanic were between 20 and 38. You can also see that most, many, many people on the Titanic traveled alone. So on average, they didn't have siblings or friends and family, let's say. And you can also see that the prices did vary quite a lot, right? So the cheapest ticket was free, that's probably crew members to be honest, but 25% of the people, they are below the first interquartile range. That means they paid less than 7.9 pounds, I suppose. Whereas the one person or like the, the, the person who paid the most paid 512 pounds for the fare. So again, these are descriptive statistics about the data sets that you can compute by just calling the describe function on the data that you loaded and it will already give you quite a good overview and quite an interesting insight, quite some insights into the data that you're analyzing. The next step would be to look at the histograms of the different attributes that we have. And that you can do by calling the function dot hist on the data that you loaded. You can specify the number of bins. You can also specify the color. And we can now look at this and we get a feeling of the age distribution. Well, we saw that before, but now you do you know how to do it yourself. We can see how the fare was distributed and also how the distribution of those who survived and those who didn't survive. And what you can see is that there's quite a number of people who did in fact survive the Titanic, but the majority unfortunately did not survive. Again, histograms, a powerful tool to learn about your data to get a feeling for the distribution. We can also look at individual value counts. So if we want to, for instance, look at the ticket number, we can type in data point, Titanic underscore train, brackets, and then the column that we're interested in here, the ticket, we can call the function value counts. And we can see which of the values are coming frequently, like most frequently. We can do that also for the biological sex. And we can see that there's a majority of people that were male on the Titanic and a minority as female. And we can then combine this with the so-called plot function. So you just have one function call that you connect with the next one and you tell it to generate a bar chart, give it a color and you tell it that it should use a grid. And then you have a nice figure that again, you can use in your report that you can use to actually interpret the data in your uh, about the Titanic. So try this out. As you can see, there's also the GitHub link with a lot more information, also a lot more text on uh, the individual functions, but I think that's a nice overview. You can do that for a variety of different things here, for instance, for when or where people embarked, when they when, where they went onto the Titanic. Uh, and final, final thing for this section is there's also a very, very easy way 
to compute the correlations. So correlations are linear relationships between different variables, which can be either positive or negative. A positive correlation means if one thing goes up, the other thing also goes up. And a negative correlation is one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. So for instance, the more sport you do, the less you weigh, that would be a negative correlation. Uh, and a positive correlation is the more educated you are, the more well paid you are. And what we do here is we compute that for all the data points that we have. So we look at which of the values are correlated with each other and we do that using the function CORR for correlation. And we assign that to a matrix and look at the matrix here. Now that's a lot of numbers, very hard to interpret. So let's make it a bit nicer. So here we use the fun, again, the library called matplotlib and the function matshow to visualize the different points. So we have a color map here that goes from minus one for negative correlation to plus one for positive correlation and um, colors it. So you can see if it's white, it means it's perfect correlation. And you can see in the matrix that these are the values. They are perfectly correlated with each other. That makes a lot of sense. But you see, the more yellow something, the higher the correlation. So if we look at this now, we find there's a very strong correlation with how much people paid and whether they survive. We find a negative correlation as well. That's basically which class they traveled in, whether they were third class or first class, and whether they survived. And here we have a negative correlation, right? So we have a reddish color. So again, it's all about representation and it's all about making our data uh, visually interpretable. And that can be quite helpful and I highly encourage you to do that with your own data as well. So another thing that we need to consider in the data set uh, beyond visualization is the so-called imputation. Imputation is what we do when we try to replace missing values. In the Titanic data set, the H, for instance, has 177 values that are null, that are not assigned. Now, the, for many analyses and for many prediction problems, every data point needs to be assigned. So you can't have unassigned values. So the question is, what can we put there to be able to train our model without falsifying or without confusing the results? One way to do this, and that's actually quite commonly do, is to assign the mean age of the data set. So we fill in each data point that's missing with the mean age. But it's of course a problem. We can't assign a four-year-old child with the mean age of 29 years. So one solution to this is to use additional information and to be a bit more thoughtful and to find different ways of replacing the values. I won't go into much detail, but I'm pretty sure if you're working with actual data, you will run into situations and then you want to look for ways to meaningfully amputate the data. One final thing, Although this is not a class on visualizations, I highly recommend you to look into visualizations and to learn more about visualization. I really like the JavaScript library D3.js, and you can find the library, the, the, the gallery here, in which they show the different kind of visualizations that they offer. All of them come with working code, and you can just add your own data to make all these visualizations and to understand your data in different ways. For instance, if you want to do uh, more sophisticated things than the bar charts and scatter plots implemented in pandas is a very good idea. They have a lot of different things like the barrel charts, like the calendar view, and also like the hierarchical edge bundling that can be quite useful in making and understanding your data.